Woo! We are live directly from Brazil. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Greetings from Brazil. Well, let me spread the word about our live. Let me see. I'm going to talk about it on my Twitter. So I need the link. Wait, 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 wait. How are you guys? Welcome. Uh, we're 10 people. Mm -mm. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my house. This is my house here in Sao Paulo. I live in this really crazy, 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 crazy city called Sao Paulo. If you can, please introduce yourselves. I want to know who I'm talking to. Tell me who you are and where you're from. We're already 15 people here on this little chat. Mm -hmm. Hello, Israel Cosme. Hello, Teminho. Everyone who are coming and arriving right now, please tell me where you're from. We have Dynamic Comics from Los Angeles. I love Los Angeles. Hello from Calgary, Princeton, Kansas City, Georgia. A lot of people from US. Teminho from Brazil. Bowler from Las Vegas. I miss Las Vegas. Vegas is amazing. So I want to know about you guys also. Have you ever been to Brazil? If you have been to Brazil at least once, please tell me yes or no. So I can know if you guys have any idea where are you actually, where I am from. Oh, here I am, okay. Now I can spread the word about our live and invite my friends, my Brazilian friends to join us. Venha aí, galera. So, First thing I want to tell you guys about Brazil is that Brazilian people are amazing. So, Thomas have seen Rio in IMAX 3D. Oh my God. So you felt almost like you've been here, right? That's pretty close, but actually not so much. I mean, being in Brazil is really, really an experience, especially because Brazil is so, so big. Oh my God, this country is so big. I, it's really hard for you to understand all about it because in the north is actually almost like a whole different country and in the south is another thing. So, oi pros pessoal brasileiro. Hello, people from Brazil. Tarzana, California, Dynamic Comics. So Dynamic Comics, probably you're like a nerd, right? So I was just talking to the owner of... Uh, the Comic-Con. So if you guys are into comics and all the nerd culture, like uh, TV series and all the stuff, you have to know that we have, and we will have this year, the biggest Comic-Con in the world. Can you believe that? Brazil is having the biggest Comic-Con, even bigger than San Diego and even bigger than New York. Yes, we're totally crazy for the nerd culture and we really, really, really are into the TV series that are from US. We love American culture. We see a lot of your shows and a lot of your music and a lot of your TV series and everything. I mean, your guys are really popular. So the thing about Brazil is that everyone is descendant from at least three different countries. Like me, I have on my blood German blood, Portuguese blood, Swedish blood, and of course, we have people somewhere. I think my great great grandfather was from Africa, and another one was my great 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 grandmother was an Indian. So, the biggest popular TV show right now in Brazil is Stranger Things, probably the same in US, right? Yeah? No, no Spanish blood, no just Portuguese and German and Swedish and Brazilian and African. That's me. That's how I look, right? A little bit of everything, even Swedish. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Brazil also. So Brazilian people are a lot like me. They're a mixture of pretty much everything. So a lot of people are really into all the cultures. We're not like American people who are usually they know more about US and not so much about the rest of the world. 
but we know a lot about other countries and we're very interested in all the cultures and we have all the kinds of food that you want to try so we probably have the best pizza in the world even better than Italians I'm sorry Italian people but we have it best and our Mexican food is different from Mexico and it's really good also we have the best Japanese food we have the best Chinese food we have the best food because we love to eat so if you're coming to Brazil you have to know that our food is absolutely delicious and the Brazilian food is also really special so we're very creative we like to mix all the different ways of doing things so that's kind of the thing in the blood you know yeah I heard that Italian pizza is not the best so yeah it's not so hard right to beat that but uh, the Brazilian pizza especially from Sao Paulo I mean the pizza in Rio is not so good the best pizza is definitely in Sao Paulo so fogo de chão that's uh, meat I'm actually uh, almost vegetarian so I'm not the best person to talk about meat but I heard that uh, the Brazilian meat is really 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 good so if you're ever coming to Brazil you have to try the meat mm. I want to know if you guys, well, I, I understand that each one of you, even though like the people who are, are not, I'm not talking to the Brazilian people right now, but if you're not from Brazil, you have never been to Brazil, that's it. We don't have any foreigner who's been to Brazil before. No, no, <laughs> I guess not. So any of you are thinking about coming to Brazil at any point in your life? I mean, not necessarily right now for the Olympics, but uh, in any point of your life, yes. Well, I have to tell you that we have the most beautiful beaches and we have the really amazing people. So being here in Brazil is all about making friends with people who are from here and exploring the beautiful nature. And also, you know, yeah, editorial shoot is really good because we have really beautiful places for you to shoot pictures or videos or pretty much everything. We have, uh, you know, way up north, northeast, you will find the best beaches, especially because it's close to the Caribbean. So the beaches look even more beautiful when you go up. But if you go to Rio, you can find places like Arraial do Cabo, which have like really, really, really beautiful, uh, like turquoise kind of sea, you know? So the best time to come to Brazil probably is going to be for carnival. I know it's like, okay, everyone's going to talk about carnival, but carnival is amazing. You have to be here at least once in your life. And let me tell you, you have to come as quick as you can because each year it gets more popular and with more crowds. So, oh my God, it's so crazy. And it's around February and March. It never is the same date in the year. You always have to Google it to check the right date. Even I never know, I always have to check. They always mix it up, especially because they sometimes think about the, the other things that are happening uh, on the year. So sometimes they decide it's going to be early or later. So you have to check every year to see what's the date for the carnival. But carnival is really interesting because you can beat, you can never beat the carnival. Wait, 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 I have like uh, issues with my phone battery. Wait, 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 don't leave me, okay. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Yeah, we have battery. Yes, there you go. So yeah, it depends on the year, but you have to come to Brazil to try our amazing carnival because the carnival is happening all around the year, all around the, the, the country. So you can find the best and most traditional carnival in Pernambuco. Pernambuco is way up northeast and that's where I like to spend it most. You go to places like uh, o, uh, Olinda. Olinda, can you remember that? Olinda. Olinda is the best place for you to enjoy the carnival because it has the most traditional things so it will look almost like a dream and it's perfect for taking pictures and making vlogs and stuff which brings me to the number one tip when you go to Brazil that is please remember that it is a very poor country so a lot of people will be wanting to take your phones away and it happens all the time I mean I have a lot of friends who are well they're being robbed like all the time that happens really often so 
uh, not actually with gun, they just pick your phone and take it away like really fast in a bike. So be smart and don't like actually vlog or do Pokemon Go on the street because people are going to take your phone away. Yeah, that is like, I'm sorry, it's true. But it's regular when you go to places who are, that are like um, really poor. So just be smart and not, uh, not having your phone showing it away when people are not actually okay <laughs> in the area. Okay, so I'm sending big hugs to all the people from Brazil because I have some people here sending me te amo, te amo baby. And let me know what are the questions that you have, like uh, the places that you want to know, like the best beaches that you want to see. And of course, I'm really worried about my battery right now because I think that I'm not actually having it loaded. But ask me questions, okay? I'm still here. <laughs> These things are in the world. Yes, that's what I think. I mean, I've been to India, I've been to China, I've been to many places. I love traveling. Oh my God, I'm crazy for traveling. And you always have to be smart. I mean, I've been to the Euro Cup uh, in Paris and I've asked my friends like, okay, so I'm used to being in Brazil and you know, we're having pickpockets everywhere. So should I be worried with my phone? Can I Snapchat all the way? And they taught me that even though you're in Paris, you just have to be careful, you know? It's always dangerous and when the places are too crowded, people will just, you know, they will rob. I mean, there are people who are living miserable, miserable lives like pretty much everywhere. So you have to be careful all the time. So more about Brazil. So I'm in Brazil right now. I'm in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is the biggest city uh, and some, sometimes I keep thinking that I would never bring my friends that are from other countries to, to Sao Paulo because it's too ugly. I don't think it's a beautiful city. And Rio de Janeiro is, Rio de Janeiro? Rio de Janeiro is the most amazing ever. Okay, asking about Comic Con. Comic Con is in Sao Paulo and it's going to be on the first week of December. And we're having like big names I cannot tell you because I just had a meeting with the guy who owns the Comic-Con here in Brazil, who runs it, and they told me that they have like the most amazing things happening this year. Uh, eu sou brasileira, para quem tá perguntando, Cris Viesi. Oh my God, I need to charge my phone. Ah! Phone, don't die, please. Don't die, don't die. Okay, is it charging? I'm worried. I'm worried it's not charging. My charger is bad. I thought I could do like Periscope on my laptop, but it doesn't work. Okay, so we have really amazing parties in Sao Paulo. That's one thing that you will never be able to, to have trouble finding because there's so many people here and so many people that are having like uh, all, all kinds of parties. I mean, you can find parties like, um, for all kinds of music and for all kinds of people and for all kinds of budgets. <laughs> if you have like a lower budget, if you have like a big budget, you won't have trouble in finding a place to entertain. And there are a lot of guides also. You can find it on internet. Ouch, 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 ouch. I'm still having trouble with my charging thing. Wait, do I like hip hop? Okay, so I'm not sure that's my favorite. Um, Music style, but I like it, yeah. Fuck. I think my charger is really bad. Wait. <laughs> okay, I think it's working. So. Ah, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the beaches that we have in Brazil. Especially if you're going to Rio. Uh, there is a beach called Prainha. Prainha is a little bitch that, little bitch, I love how the word bitch sounds like bitch, bitch, beach, and bitch. They sound so much alike, right? It's so funny. Well, Prainha is a small beach, 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 that is really, really beautiful and you can find it like looking like a beautiful scenario and not so crowded and not so filled with people and not so dirty because if you go to these beautiful places that are so popular like uh, Copacabana it's 
actually in the middle of the city, so if you go there, you'll probably see a lot of people, and of course, there will be trash in the sand, so of course, if you're in the city and you're close, it's always good to be there, but if you want to try something more nature-like, nature you know, and more um, adventurous, you should go to Prainha. Prainha is close, it's a place that you can you can find easily and go in one day and bring back and go, go back to your place in the whole same day. Okay, so Parque Laje, it's another beautiful thing to see in Rio. Joachinga, 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 Joachinga is also really beautiful. And, you know, Cristo Redentor is another place that you have to go, you know, Cristo Redentor is really beautiful, you will see the whole city from above. And of course, it's going to be crowded and it's going to be hard to take a beautiful selfie. So if you want to take a selfie, you should try to go at the first hour. That's going to be prettier. But at the same time, you might find fog because most of the time in the beginning of the day, Rio de Janeiro has a fog in the early morning. So it's kind of hard, right? Hard choice. But uh, Copacabana is beautiful, especially in the sunset. In the sunset, you will see this really beautiful nature mixed with the city and a lot of beautiful people and people playing games with balls and, you know, really gorgeous women and really handsome men. So you will, of course, have a lot of good time. And in Lapa, Lapa is the neighborhood in, in Rio that is not safe for you to hang around, like wandering around with a camera or something, but it's really crowded with people who are younger and who want to, you know, have cool drinks and have a beer at the end of the day. So people who are more stylish and young and interesting, they usually go to Lapa. And also, in, in Lapa you will find Bonjinho. Bonjinho is it's a small car that runs in electric uh, rail. <laughs> it's really hard to explain that, but I think that's it. And it goes in an arch place. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. And it goes all the way up to this other neighborhood that is quite old. So you will see older buildings and you can see the really beautiful sides of the city. So that's a place where you will have fun also. So probably at the time of Olympics, there will be much more security than we have now. But now you will already see a lot of uh, police stations around the city. But at the same time, you will never be completely safe. So please don't try doing Pokemon Go anywhere and don't actually start doing a vlog or Snapchatting and moving your phone around and take care. I mean, be smart. Always look around and check the kids. They're really quick and they usually they are in a bike. So just be smart, but it's okay. You know, people talk a lot about, oh my God, it's so dangerous. But I never been robbed in my life, so I just, I just once I had a pickpocket with my phone, and it was like right in front of my house here in São Paulo. So you never know, you can never feel totally safe. It's so it's just be smart all the time. Uh, Parque Lage, it's a really beautiful place because it's, it stays in the botanic garden, and not many people actually are interested in visiting it because it's not so well taken care of. But at the same time, if you like nature and if you want to take some pictures, it's a really beautiful place to be. So I usually talk about this place because I feel like it's beautiful. And right, near to, right next to it, they have this really interesting places to eat. So you can like hang around in the city. Yeah, someone is talking here about uh, how interesting it is actually in Sao Paulo. So, Sao Paulo is really interesting if you want to hang around in parties and, you know, kiss some beautiful lips of girls and boys. There are a lot of stuff happening all the time. I mean, every week you can just buy uh, on a Friday the, the, the newspaper and we'll come with a guide. That's really what we have like every, every Friday. I just open it and see what we have. And we always have like amazing concerts, a lot of bands, especially bands that are from here because uh, Brazil is really, really rich in culture. So we have amazing or amazing bands and artists, the best pizza, yes, the best pizzas in, in the world probably. So you can always have a, an interesting place to eat, 
an interesting place to check like a concert and also if you want to hang party night like party up to 8 a.m you will find amazing places yes amazing places i live quite near to an area that is uh, avenida paulista and it, there's a street that crosses avenida paulista that is called augusta augusta is on one side a richer place and the other side like a poorer place but the poorest place is the funnest because we have like the horse hanging around and also a lot of people who are just drinking and having fun and pubs a lot of pubs and well many kinds of places because we have like places that are just focused on concerts and other places that are like uh, just clubs so and a really big mixture of people because a few years ago there would just be horse and then there were horse and people who liked rock and roll and now we have like a mixture of pretty much everything and all ages so you would see like young kids and people who are uh, a bit older uh, how many languages do I speak um, I think four comedian houses yes bem lembrado Chris we have comedian houses, you know, people who are like stand-up, they will find also uh, cool places here. In the past years, the comedy uh, clubs and the stand-up comedy clubs, they grew a lot. And we have uh, strong comedian groups working and doing amazing things. So yes, we have a lot of theater, but you probably don't understand Portuguese, so I'm not sure that's a good tip anyway. Uh, also... If you like nature, Rio de Janeiro is really beautiful for that. We have waterfalls that are really close to the city, so you can just hitchhike in a place that is near and you will find uh, waterfalls, you will find uh, small beaches that are not so popular, crowded. You get up in mountains, because when you're, when you're wandering around the city, it's really, 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 really beautiful because there are a lot of big rocks and a lot of Atlantic uh, forests that are protected, that no one can actually build anything in it. So you will see this really beautiful site of the city mixed with a lot of beautiful nature. And it's really easy for you to climb them. So you can climb the rocks and check the beautiful view and take amazing pictures. So yes, Rio de Janeiro is a really beautiful place. Don't be scared about it. Don't listen to all the crazy media thing they're talking about, you know, the Zika virus and anything. I don't know anyone who had the Zika virus. It's mostly in the Northeast, and I, they just talked about in the newspaper this week that if you drink a lot of green tea, yeah, green tea, if you eat, drink a lot of green tea, you, the, if the Zika virus bites you, it won't do anything, so you're fine. You just have to drink green tea all the way. And also, near Rio, you can find the High do Calbo. I talked about it, and it's really, really beautiful. If you want a place that is more like not city-like, it's more like nature. Uh, Arraial do Cabo is kind of close and it's really beautiful. Angra dos Reis also. Oh my God, you can find turtles and beautiful fishes and all the amazing nature that we have is really beautiful. But I think that if you're more like things that look like Caribbean, you have to go to the Northeast and Pernambuco. Pernambuco is amazing. And also, if you want to try the carnival in Rio, that's also really good. Uh, it's really, really crowded. So if you're not into, you know, hanging around with people who are really actually touching your skin while you walk, because that's what it is, people will be like so close, so close, they will be close to you and you will also feel like you're all one person, <laughs> like a whole group being one humankind and all with like mixed with glitter and sweat all the time and I'm okay with that so I have a lot of fun especially because you're going to be really drunk so <laughs> it usually is really okay also quite near Rio de Janeiro but if you want to take a car and spend a few other days in a place that is not so close but not so far you can find Parachi. Parachi is a place where you can take uh, small boats and just go to little islands and there are so many beautiful islands and it's really filled with nature and amazing, amazing, amazing place. Also in Sao Paulo, there are a lot of exhibits happening. So we have uh, now 
uh, I think in se September is going to start this really beautiful thing with uh, Frida Kahlo photographs that is really beautiful and my favorite 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 place in Brazil if you ask me like one one tell me one place I just have one 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 place to go Fernando de Noronha Fernando de Noronha is one island that is quite almost like Caribbean style which is in Pernambuco northeast as I said the best beaches so if you go to Recife and you take a small airplane to Fernando de Noronha Fernando de Noronha is going to be oh, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen it has amazing sights you can just you know swim with all the, the, the beautiful fishes and the turtles and the hyas and oh it's crazy 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 and it's so special that they won't allow so many people to be there so sometimes you have to check if you can go because otherwise they would just too full so they will not allow you to stay and you have to pay like a, a uh, I think there's a tax that you have to pay for each day that you stay there and you cannot stay more than I think six days I think that's it and you have to check really early if you're going to be able to stay those days there because it's really uh, especially now that we're having so many people coming to Brazil it's probably going to be crowded so also about Parachi, Parachi is really beautiful because we have this really antique and old uh, village place so if you like ruins and if you like uh, historical buildings that's a beautiful, beautiful place but also in Rio you will find a lot in Sao Paulo unfortunately we almost killed like pretty much everything we had that was really old because it's a really poor country so usually we don't have money to spend on antique buildings because it takes a lot of money to make them look beautiful so uh, our government doesn't have interest in wasting the money with that unfortunately but in Rio since it's a more touristic city we have more of that uh, I have a tip for people who want to spend a few days staying in Brazil I think it's really interesting to check the Airbnb because you're going to be hanging around with Brazilian people it's since it's not a quite so safe place and since, it, since it's too big and there are so many things that you can do it would be easier if you could stay with Brazilian people so you will have like tips from the insiders and people who are from the area so they will say like oh you shouldn't go at that place and that place is really amazing for food and it, it's really a waste of time and money and traveling if you go to a really beautiful and interesting city but you don't take the most out of it like being in Sao Paulo and not eating the really interesting food uh, is like wasting your time and money and going to Rio and not actually going to the best beaches is also a waste of time and money so uh, you can also check Pinterest Pinterest is really good for me for checking tips on traveling they always have like uh, guides and the top five things and things you can't miss you know and also pictures of the places like you can check if you really want to go to that place before you reach there I, I hate going to a place and missing the best things and coming back to my house and checking like oh my god I can't believe I didn't go to that place oh it's so beautiful I missed it so make sure you do like uh, before you travel that's like a tip for any traveling you're doing I mean I travel a lot and that's pretty much whatever I do wherever I go I always do the same thing I do a lot of research before not only with those guides that are really expensive and big and you know you're not going to actually read that uh, I usually use a lot of Pinterest and a lot of bloggers that are doing a lot of good researches and if you find a good blog you just stick to it, to it and just make sure that you search on that blog the best tips that are related to the next destination that you're having so another I have the seven best beaches of Rio de Janeiro that I just found here that is saying Copacabana of course Ipanema Leblon Barra da Tijuca Prainha that I told you Abricó and Grumari oh yeah Grumari I heard that Grumari was really beautiful but I don't remember that let me check on Pinterest how does it look like hmm I'm not sure. Let me see. Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. Okay, a lot of people go to Grumari to take pictures of their weddings. So, yeah, it's going to be beautiful. 
and it's listed on Huffington Post as one of the top 10 beaches in Brazil according to Brazilian people so that's what I'm talking about you should always like search on good research websites like uh, Pinterest about the places that you want to go and they will always tell you about other places that are related that you can also check good tips about it so usually the places that people go to take pictures of their weddings is usually the places that are really beautiful so Grumari I didn't know about this beach before and of now they are talking here about Joachinga that someone was asking before and that's really another place that is quite beautiful because it has really big rocks but it's a small uh, beach it's not so big so you can be unlucky sometimes and just find it really crowded of course that if you're coming in the Olympic time and if you're coming in the in Carnival time is going to be always really crowded, so uh, my suggestion for you would be coming a little bit before, before the date, <laughs> like right now, before the Olympics would, wouldn't work, but before the, the carnival, it's always really good, especially because we have pre-carnival stuff, so we love carnival so much that we will never miss it, so we always have like, if you go to Pernambuco, in January it's already carnival so <laughs> you can find amazing concerts and really amazing artists that are from Brazil that are going to be showing their their latest albums and stuff usually in Pernambuco in January February and March I'm not so much interested in the winter here in Brazil but if you are up to that we always have the south that is going to be colder but if you come here in the winter time and you go to the northeast it's always going to be warm so we have a full year of summer in the northeast you like don't worry about the weather what kind of music they're going to play in the opening of the Olympics which is going to be in a few hours well, I'm so sorry to tell you that but not the best I mean I'm I used to work as a hostess on MTV Brazil for five years so I'm quite uh, related to the musical universe of Brazil and I'm really sad that <laughs> my my favorite bands are not going to be playing and I don't mean that by my favorite bands that are like the things that I actually not because just I listen to them but like if you listen to Nação Zumbi Nação Zumbi is, this is Nação Zumbi this is really traditional Brazilian song because it's maracatu. Maracatu, it's uh, a kind of uh, a drum that people play in a really eccentric way that is really intense and happy and we use it a lot in the, in the carnival and they dress in this really amazing way and it's, and it's very related to the ritual and the religion and the African beliefs and it's mostly in the Northeast so let me show you how they look something like this Check. So this is Maracatu a lot of people who are actually usually really poor they're not like people who are from high classes they dress in this really special way and they build themselves the clothes. They are really, really, really beautiful. Oh my God, this is really, really special and colorful and happy. And usually they're like father and son all the time. Like the family are all together working with it. And it sounds so amazing. It's so special. You will mostly find it in the Northeast. That's what I wanted to see in the opening of the Olympics. I'm quite sad. That's not going to happen, probably. Probably we're having like uh, the most uh, radio-like things we listen, which is not so much Brazilian. Anita is going to perform, and Anita is like one of the biggest artists right now in Brazil. Uh, I don't have anything against her, but her sound is more like American pop, so it doesn't show so much of Brazilian culture. That's why I'm not so happy about it and I like things that are more like this, you know. <laughs> so that, 
you're listening to is called Nação Zumbi. Nação Zumbi is a rock band that is really influenced by the Brazilian culture from the Northeast because they're from there. And it's totally what I wanted to listen in the Olympics right now. Well, it's not going to happen. But we're probably having like Gilberto Gil and Caetano Veloso, which are uh, our most famous singers. But they're quite old right now, so I'm not sure how it's going to be. But they're so sweet, I really love them. And the music is really beautiful. So I, I really hope that they're uh, it's going to be a really beautiful experience. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really worried. I mean, as all Brazilians, we're really worried about what's going to happen in the Olympics, of course. We want it to be the best. But at the same time, we know that we're poor and we're, you know, sometimes we're they're not not the best people that are going to be hired for the things that we want to show so probably it's not going to be as beautiful as we could which is the sad part so tell me more tell me more if you want to see the, what are the other destinations that you're interested in brazil i mean apart from rio do you want to know more about other places i mean Minas Gerais might be interesting. Minas Gerais is the best place for you to eat also because we have... Uh, have you heard about the cheese balls? We have cheese balls that are so amazing. They're, they're bread with cheese and you would say like, okay, bread with cheese. I have that in my country, but no, you don't because on that recipe we have polvilho and polvilho is something you don't have. <laughs> polvilho is like a sour... Uh, wheat kind of thing which is not wheat i don't even know what it's actually made of let me see <laughs> polvilho let's google it polvilho what's actually that oh my god well tapioca you know tapioca tapioca is, is similar okay thank you for you who's hoping for us to to look good in the olympics i'm also hoping for that i hope it so if you ever come to Brazil, you have to try the pão de queijo. Pão de queijo is made with polvilho, and polvilho is... Okay, fécula de mandioca? Yeah, mandioca. Mandioca frita is another thing that you have to try. I don't even know how to say mandioca. I don't think you even have that word. Mandioca in English. How do you say that? <sighs> okay, so you guys who never heard about me, uh, I have to tell... Manioc. That's how you say it. Manioc. Uh, my name is Mari Moon. Uh, I've been working as a TV hostess in Brazil for the for five years. So a lot of people here in Brazil they know me as a TV hostess from MTV. But actually, I started as a internet celebrity in the early 2000s. Actually, I've been working with internet content since the 90s. I'm really interested into internet since the beginning of it, and I'm 33, so I had time for that. And in the early 2000, like 2003, have you heard about Photolog, which was something similar to Instagram? Yeah, you heard about it? Well, Photolog was really popular in the early 2000s, it was like first social network ever, ever. So I became famous on that. And yeah, I had the hair already. My hair was totally colorful. Oh my God, my hair was so colorful. <laughs> and I was picked by MTV to be their hostess because they wanted someone that could talk about music and was interested in uh, all the amazing things about the internet and I knew a lot about it so they asked me to be their hostess and I stayed there for five years and after that I started working with other TV channels and also I had my own blog since the 90s and on my whole my own social network I had a lot of stuff to share so I have a lot of fans if you find me on Google, you will find everything. You will find my Facebook. My Facebook, I have like more than one million likes. And on my Instagram, it's also Mari Moon. I have 600,000 people following me. And yeah, I feel famous because when I hang around, people know who I am. <laughs> That's really interesting when you just forget sometimes, but people, they really know who you are. So I have a lot of fans and that's really nice because a lot of people they relate to me because of so many things but uh, usually I'm, I'm talking about being yourself and not being worried about what people are thinking about yourself and if they don't like the way you look, if they don't like the way you 
dress, if they don't like the way you dye your hair. I mean, what's up with that? You know, don't worry about it. Just be yourself and be happy. If you look in the mirror and you're happy about it, just be okay. So, are you asking if they are racist in Brazil? That's a good question. Uh, let me tell you that Brazil is a mixture of all the cultures and people from so many places, so it's easier for us not to be uh, so racist as other countries that are more like all the same. Like if you go to China, they're all Chinese. If you go to Japan, they're all Japanese. But here in Brazil, we're a mixture of everything. So you're used to see people who don't look like you in your class, in your neighborhood, and even in your family. So a lot of friends of mine, there are really people from other people from other countries, and they they're descended from other countries, so they look different from me. And but at the same time, the Usually people who are really dark skinned, they are poor. That's, that's, that's the reality. So we usually, a lot of people still relate dark skin with being poor and dark skin with being someone who could rob you. And you know, that's really hard for us to overcome. But at the same time, it's being easier right now because we're having this really intense change of ways of thinking and of uh, dealing with ourselves so the new generation is so amazing we're like so together and we're having amazing ways of changing the way we, the old people think you know so uh, like if you think about my parents generation they were like racist, they were, uh, you know, they had a lot of prejudice with people who were different in any way, so my grandmother wouldn't like my hair, you know, and if you were gay, it wouldn't be okay, but now, our generation, my generation, people are like 30, 20, and the teenagers, they're thinking all different, and we're breaking all the rules, and we're talking about, you know, being yourself, and loving everyone and not thinking about skin color or the way you dress or anything and we're almost like even wanting other people to be different because that's even more interesting you know that's what I feel I always felt that things that were different from my reality was more interesting to me than you know the regular I never liked regular you know being regular was never like a good thing for me so I always were interested in being different so I think that right now we have our community of people like an in internet especially if you see our groups on the internet we're very united and we're very into feminism and we're very uh, you know fighting all the prejudice on smaller groups and you, if oh yeah that's another thing you can come you can come to our GLS uh, parade which will be a gay parade a few years ago, but now it's a whole GLS trans and everything parade, which is amazing and really beautiful. And now we're, you know, we're changing the whole way of thinking. And uh, if you talk about the young kids, the young kids are usually all okay with all being different, but still the generations for my parents and my great parents, they're still not thinking so much like the same, but at the same time, they're being forced to accept, otherwise they will lose their family. So if you're a young kid and you're gay and your parents won't be okay with it, they will lose you. Lose you. So uh, it's being like forced to them that they have to accept it and being okay with them. So I think it's a big moment for Brazil. It's a big moment for, I think, the world, but I see that more in Brazil. Uh, and if you're gay or GLS or trans or whatever, you can feel okay here in Brazil. There are a lot of parties, there are a lot of places that you will feel really safe and a lot of people that will be uh, your friend, that will treat you good. I mean, I have a friend that is from Brazil but she's been living in Hong Kong and she's a trans and she's amazing. She just arrived a few weeks ago and we're having like so many people that are greeting her so well and she just released a book. So that wouldn't happen like 10 years ago. So it's been so many changes for the past years. Yeah, Brazil is really nice, isn't it? <laughs> Brazil is a really place to be. I mean, you should come. We have good parties, we have amazing people, and everyone is welcome. 
So even if you don't speak Portuguese, people will be really interested in helping you. I mean, a lot of people here, they don't speak good English like me. Uh, I'm not like the, the medium range of people. They don't speak like me. I have a lot of effort uh, for the past two years because I wanted to work as a Disney illustrator. I wanted to create characters from Lion King and Aladdin. <laughs> that was my dream. But um, since that didn't happen, I still had to you know, study a lot. So that's how I have a good English. How's the weather usually? Well, if you're from England, you're going to find this weather like the most perfect ever because it's totally different from, from England. We have usually really beautiful days and it's really hard for us to have uh, so many days that don't look so good. Usually when the moon changes, it changes the weather. Like we just have right now a change of the moon and the weather was not looking so good. But now it's opening up. So usually we have a lot of rain in the summertime. By the end of the year, it's the most rainy one. And usually if you're spending like the new year, you're going to have rain on the new year. That's really sad, but it happens, yeah. I'm used to that, so it's like a blessing. You feel like a blessing and it's okay. So uh, I would usually say that the best time of the year would be around carnival, yes, because the weather is not so, uh, not, not, they're not so rainy and still really hot. And interesting to come because of the holidays so I would say come for the carnival but at the same time you can always come I mean it's always good weather even when it's cold it's really beautiful because it, it gets really open so you have a lot of blue sky and you know it's never as cold as it, as it is in the in England or if you're from Russia or whatever it's like you will never have uh, I think less than zero and we don't have uh, snow, so it's mostly like summer and uh, spring and autumn, but never winter. Keep thinking about that and you will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> so the nature is also really beautiful, we have really beautiful animals, so if you're into going to the, this really nature-like adventure kind of trip, it's going to be interesting as well. What else can I tell you about Brazil? Well, <laughs> you guys have questions? You guys want to know about uh, what? Are you upset they are sponsoring the Olympics instead of helping the country? I think at the same time that it's quite good that people look at Brazil right now and see what's actually happening with, happening with us because I feel that a lot of countries think that here is just being happy and spending carnival and dancing samba all the time and playing soccer games and now we will have the chance to show the world not only our best things that are you know the beautiful people and the nature and all the stuff but also show you how much we're suffering because we are suffering I mean we've been suffering since the beginning of the times I mean we had Indians here and then Portugal came and they almost killed like pretty much all the Indians and then they raped the Indian girls and then we just gave them all the gold and all the you know amazing things that we had like even it was uh, uh, the, 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 the trees or whatever we were like a colony for so many years and we feel that we are still a colony so it's good for us to show the world what's actually the reality here and how much corruption we're having so the whole world needs to know what's happening on the whole world. We're one, you know, even though it's, it feels like, oh, I'm Japan, so I'm from Japan and I'm Japanese and I'm just worried about Japan, and I'm from US, I'm just worried about US. No, we're a whole world, you know, we have to be together and we have to take care of each other. So if things are not going so well in, you know, one place of the world, we have to at least know about it, you know, and try to help even though it's, Sometimes it's just an organization that's going to help. Sometimes it's someone that can actually travel and help and, you know, take pictures and show the world what's happening. You have to be connected. It's 2016. Let's be connected. Let's help each other and let's love each other and let's get the best and the worst at our sites. With that, I'm going to say goodbye <laughs> and you're all welcome to follow me on the social networks. I'm Mari Moon. You can spell that with M-A-R-I-M-O-O-N. I think I just uh, used that on my the title of it. 
Anyway, you can find me. So I speak English and I can understand you guys. If you want to ask me stuff, other stuff about traveling and other stuff about Brazil, you can ask me on my Facebook, on my Twitter, on my Instagram. I'm very also uh, really intense on all social metrics. I'm really crazy about it since I'm an influencer, a YouTuber, an Instagram girl, and pretty much everywhere. So find me, send me a message, and thank you so much for having me for all this. I don't even know how long have we been here, but <laughs> it's been so it's been a while. I think something like 30 minutes. Okay, so thank you for being all this 30 minutes with me. Uh, good hugs, and if you ever come to Brazil, let me know. Okay. Big hugs for you all. Bye-bye.